Hello to any combo lords out there. Assuming this is working, I'm still figuring out the details of how I make my face go in the corner and show cool graphs. Right now it might be showing a whole iterated layer of me. Um, let me make sure this is even working. Am I coming through correctly? Do, do, do. I think I should be. Cool. Well, hopefully this is working for you guys. Let me start by pulling up some shapes. And we're going to begin just by a reminder of some of the cool shapes we saw last time, which was when we were looking at trigonometric functions like y equaling the sine of x or the cosine of x, we got some cool shapes. But something even cooler was when we started iterating them, like if we went the tangent of the cosine of x. And if we threw an x in there, and it makes everything go absolutely crazy. Even if we just went the tangent of instead of x, the tangent of x squared, we get something absolutely crazy. Now, I went through some of my notes and did a little more fiddling around and found some more crazy shapes you're not going to believe. So, let me show the beginning, and I just have a list here, so I'm going to have to pull it open on my phone where the comments are anyway. And then I'm going to, one by one, pull out some ones that I've noted down, having some interesting properties, and then we'll fiddle around with them a little bit, see if there's any little variables we could change. So the first one we're going to take a peek at is going to be, this one is a little more normal looking than this, but it's still a kind of cool thing to get. Look at these lines that make up the grid. All of those outsides of the little cells. Oh, and my cat Dandelion's waiting here with a little sweetheart. That's a good boy. You can come up on the bed, Dandelion. Um, in any case, look at these grid points. The lines that go between any grid point are just invisible here on our graph. But what if we want to make them come to life? Well, sine functions on their own have a period of 2 pi, technically, because they go up and down, but their period swings a pi at a time. And so what if we say sine of pi of x? The period is now 1. I've made the period more normalized. I've sort of canceled out the pi-ness of the sine by putting pi in there. Now, what if I say that y equals, and they're already assuming there's a y equals there for that, sine of pi of x times sine of pi of y. Whoa, we get these weird bubbles. That was different than I recalled, but it looks really cool. Now, if we want to actually get the graph, what I forgot is we don't want y to be that. Although this looks cool, you see there's a line running through the x e or the y equals zero gets a whole line, and then we get these bubbles where it was equal. That is pretty cool. But what I meant to do to make our graph is look at this. What if that equals zero? It draws the grid lines. That's a scale of where that's one. So like if I zoom out, we can see it has drawn the grid lines. <laughs> if I want to get a sort of different one too, I can add a plus there instead. And I skew them sideways you know, times plus. And what about if I change that? What's going to happen? Uh, it doesn't work. No, no values work for that. What about if it's zero is more than it? There we go. That's interesting. These are the spots that zero is greater than that. And these are the spots where zero is less than that. We get a checkerboard of black and white if we do that. That's pretty nifty. Now, those just make little grid points. But let's see what happens when we take a sine of y 
And one of the things that we were fiddling around with last time is the fact that if we graph x factorial, they not only show the part that factorials make sense by the typical definition, but they show an extension, which must be based on uh, something related to the gamma function, or since it's offset, maybe something called the pi function. But it's an extension of the factorials that doesn't use the definition of multiplying all the integers from one through them but that makes sense in mathematical context so this part's getting included on x factorial now what happens if i say the sine of x factorial we may have already tried forget if we tried this one this one's wacky we get look at those weird glitches right there look at that that's really weird that's trippy and then we're flat <laughs> whoa but what if we, and this one just gets busier and busier. What if we graph that um, sine of y equals sine of x factorial? Because this was y equals sine of x factorial. What if we say the sine of y equals that? Look at this. Now, here's the thing. When they say this equation contains fine detail, it's not been resolved. That means some of this might not be as artistic looking as it looks. If we zoom in, it might be more like a weird pattern of these. When we're on this scale, we can see it does seem to think it has all the stuff because it doesn't say that message anymore. But when you zoom out far enough, they're telling us I'm having trouble getting all that data at once. But regardless of the missing data part, look at all of these waves. Look at this weirdness. So weird and cool. Crazy stuff going on here. What if we switch which one gets the factorial? And that seems to kind of make it sideways-ish. Whoa. So that part, yeah, may not be gathering the data correctly, but still super cool on these curvy parts that get weird. Whoa. So now what we're going to look at is these are other unrelated ones from the notes that I remembered looked cool. Let's say we want to know this one's kind of layered. This one I just know looks cool. Um, oops. These ones where you put a lot of nested trig functions together are really trippy. Look at these shapes here you get as you go out. Whoa. It's like this weird dome-like center. It's like a room in a building. Now, we can real quick just try fiddling with some of these. Like what happens if you take that off? What happens if we switch some of these, turn that to a tan? What happens if we uh, turn that to a tan? Whoa. So we're getting cool variations on that. Sorry, I haven't peeked at the comments yet. I'm going to do one more, then peek at the comments. So I just love these graphs. Next, we're going to look at sine of x squared plus y squared. Equals cosine of xy. And we're going to now say to the power of a with a slider. So we can change this. So look at this. That's crazy. Now let's change it. It's having trouble gathering all the data. Let's zoom in a little bit. Strange. These sliders are cool. It's a good option to just throw a slider up on one and see how we can wiggle it. I put the slider on the other side now. So I'm gonna take a peek at your comments and then I got more cool graphs. While I answer the comments, I gotta remember to keep it exciting for people watching. We gotta pop one of our extra fun graphs on there. Oh wait, that was a weird one. I meant tan of x squared. What's this gonna do though? 
y equals tan of x to the y. That was an accident, but it could be cool. Whoa, what's that? What the heck? What the heck? Look at the shape it does. That's weird. Now, it isn't gathering all that data, as we can see. It has, like, these lines, mostly. But, whoa. Okay, let me take a peek at your comments real quick. Um, thank you all for joining me here. You're all super awesome. Um, someone's wondering my thoughts on HP Lovecraft. Um, some cool thoughts. He definitely... Uh, I don't... I haven't read that much of his stuff, but I do like the thoughts of tapping into the void and creepy mythical things that could be beyond the void. Um, so, someone else is recommending that all the viewers have uh, Desmos open themselves too. I recommend it as well. You can be typing in these graphs and just like pulling them around. There's a free website. Um, also, you could be messing around with your own variations, like turn that to y to the x, or throw a factorial somewhere, or throw an x somewhere. Um, you could also throw a slider on somewhere, like I could say instead of x to the y, I could say x to the a, and make a slider. So, someone said to make a heart if i'm a real one now i am a real one uh but i don't remember the equation for a heart uh we could google that in a minute or someone can send me the equation for a heart but i don't remember off the top of my head what equation will make that um it's a lot harder to have a shape in mind and know the equation that makes it without using the limited range if you say like i'm only doing this function from like make the thing and they were like oh cool this is going to work in a phone just the building of mathematical knowledge helps future technology and science just a groundwork that we stand on um i froze am i still frozen uh-oh let me know if i'm back what's going on okay hopefully i'm not frozen Good. It's probably my internet. My internet can be weird. So if it ever does that, bear with me. And I'm still here for the shapes. So thank you all. I'm going to go to my next graphs. And another one that I wrote down having some cool stuff about it was if we go, there's another nested one with a few in each other. We're going to go the sign of sine of y plus, or no, sine of x plus cosine of y equals the cosine of something kind of similar, but we have a double in there. This is kind of like a variation of that earlier one I made, kind of. Look at that. The, oh no, this one's the coolest. I, this one's insane. Okay, you're not gonna believe this one. This one is mind blown. You see this weird thing? It's like, okay, that's weird. Why is that the points where this is true? And then you go over here and you're like, okay, over here, that's the points where it's true. And then you go over here and you're like, okay, it looks different on each of these. They're all a little different. And now I'm gonna zoom out and it's gonna lose some of its detail, but it looks something like this. Look at that. It's a world. There's a whole world of like little organisms, practically. They're all their own little creature. Absolutely insane. Oh my God. So crazy. These ones look like sideways eyes. Look at all these eyes of the universe staring at you. Look at that one. It gets like a little bubble over there. There's a little extra bit. These are so weird. Okay, how can we mess with this one to change it in a cool way? Let's try turning any of these to tangents, maybe. Whoa! This now made like this weird other type of like algae-like species, like rippling off and making weird little clumps and stuff. 
Okay, this one. That's weird. So that's, it's losing some detail here. Let's see if we can get to a scale where it thinks it has the detail. This is weird. Okay, so that was replacing that one with tan. I think, what was it originally, cosine? Let's replace other ones with tan. Whoa. Okay, when we're zoomed out, we're not gonna see all the detail, but just to fiddle with some, let's zoom out. Whoa. Whoa. There's another version of the balls. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, now what we're gonna try is putting a slider on one with the power of A. And let's see if we can make them move. Whoa, do they connect for a second? That's weird. Why, when A is 1.2, are they connected? What the heck? That's really weird. When A is 1.2, they seem to be connected. When A is 1.1, .1, they seem to not be. That's weird. Is that true even on the close scale where they think they have the detail? Now we can tell the scale's still bugging a little bit. We're kind of overloading their computer with some of these questions. That's weird, why does it do that? What's going on there? Maybe those points are sometimes there and it was having trouble seeing them. Look at this just world it creates. This is like a whole world you can investigate. Find little puddles and forests. All right, now we're gonna try the slider on the other one. Okay, that one got more rectangular. Whoa, look. When this slider's up, they're like more square. Here, they're like balls, they're circular kinda, and they're getting squarer and squarer. Whoa, now they've made a grid, but a weird one. Whoa, look at this checkerboard. Whoa. All right, I'm gonna peek at your comments and then we're gonna do another one. Uh, I need to flip to the comments on my phone for now still. So, um, someone says there's a heart formula that they got from Google. We will try it out, why not? Um, so, and someone's saying that it might have been because some of the powers returned complex numbers and others canceled. Um, let's try the heart equation before we move on to more that I had in my notes. Hearts are good because combo class approves of love. We want people to be more loving and it's sometimes hard to be open about your love for things or people. But let's try and be open about our love. And let's try and draw a heart. If so, someone sometime is going to feed me a formula in here that looks like something really inappropriate or something. Watch this actually be like a dick and not a heart. It's kind of heart like this is so okay this is a type of heart this is a mathematical heart known as a cardioid i don't know if this is the exact formula for the cardioid or not but it looks like it might be because this looks like it you guys know where cardioids show up a lot of places there's things about rotating circles and rotating things where they're like edges and centers can trace out paths like this 
and this thing shows up in there's times table things where if you have like a circular modular times table um you're well you're basically it looks like a modular chart but you're treating it like multiplying around uh some things paint out cardioids and they're one classic example of where this shows up You guys know the Mandelbrot set? Probably like the, oops, no, whoa. I accidentally was not, sorry, Wikipedia. I cannot donate $100 I accidentally clicked. Um, if I'm rich, I'll donate to Wikipedia someday. If I ever had a ton of money, I would donate to Wikipedia. Um, check this out, cardioid. See that big old cardioid shape right there? In fact, there's a little one there too. There's mini ones. See that little one? Uh, but that's definitely big old cardioid shape. And we'll talk. We'll do an episode about the Mandelbrot set for sure. It is totally worth it. Mandelbrot set is great, and it relates to graphs. But we would need the complex plane, um, and we would need to. It's not graphing an equation as much as. There's an equation that you iterate infinitely many times, and it's asking which points fly off to infinity and which ones don't. Um, and when we get these extra colors, that's asking how fast certain ones fly to infinity. Um, but yeah, it's fractal, it's beautiful, got a big cardioid in it. So, mathematically, we have created a heart, but I don't think many would consider this like the stereotypical heart symbol. However, I don't even know what's up with the heart symbol. It doesn't look like a real heart, and it doesn't look like a math heart. So, yeah, this thing is the cardioid. Cool shape. Um, we got another one here that I'm not sure if this is going to be the heart or if this is just a random suggestion. Uh, so we're going to try it. Uh, I didn't see, okay, yeah, no, we do have a parenthesis there, so we need x squared plus y squared plus sine of y over that. Now, this is going to be interesting because when x squared plus y squared is together, sometimes you get circular stuff. Because x squared plus y squared equals another thing uh, is a shape for a circle. The other thing being the radius squared. So. Yeah, they mentioned that it looks cool around the origin. This Remember there was one last time where I was zoomed in and then I thought it was boring and then I zoomed out and I was like, this is really cool. This is the opposite. If you saw this zoomed out, you would be like, oh man, nothing going on here. Got a straight line with a slope of negative one. It literally looks from this angle like the equation is y equals negative x. Not this whole thing. <laughs> um, but then you zoom in. You see a little knot. We have a knot going on there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Usually when we zoomed out, we hit, you can't describe it. This one we zoomed in and you hit, you can't describe it. Whoa, that is cool. From this angle, this looks like a galaxy or like something, this is like birth of a galaxy. It just keeps getting denser. It can't It's not ever going to comprehend it, I don't think, because I think there's more and more lines. But since lines are infinitely thin, there's still gaps between the lines. But it's just having more and more trouble comprehending it the closer we go. Now I'm trying to go back out so we can see the universe getting sucked back into a star. That's cool. I like that one. 
So, yeah. Wow. So. Let's see what else. Thank you for all the questions and stuff. Some of the random questions I've already asked in past screens, so past streams, so uh, I'm gonna continue with the graphing, but feel free to keep asking questions. Cool, we got weird busy clumps and gaps. That's pretty neat. What do you, what, I, I like when they do this weird thing where it's like, I have a big bit. I have these stripes that seem to have nothing between them. I mean, they might have something way down there, but nothing in between them up here. Why here? Why negative 3.5 when you plug that in, you get this, it's trippy. Um, all right, we got more suggestions. So I'm gonna keep doing the suggestions. Y equals cosine of X plus cosine of two X. That one's a cool little wavy thing someone said, yep. Um, now, sine, Cosine mod. I don't know if they have this, do they? This is what they typed. Hmm, that's strange. <laughs> that's cool. Look, this is a journal. And then they fly upward here in size. And then this one is going to go the other way. You know, champ, champ. Wait, there is no other way? No, yeah, there is. Jam, jam, jam. Is it periodic? Yeah. They get different types of little curve in between. That's cool. All right. Um, I, I can't do all of them. I'm gonna skip to one of the ones that said heart-like ones. Um, so, Thank you for all of the suggestions, but I might have to come back to them in the future. There's also people who left ones on the last video I still have to get back to, but I still just have some on a list that I had from my own notes from before that I'm gonna go through more in a second. So, okay, real quick, I'll try this heart suggestion. X to the power of two thirds minus square root of one minus X squared. And they said that might be part of the heart and then we can add the other part. So that looks like it could be the bottom of the heart. Now let's try and add the top. This is gonna go X to the two thirds again, plus square root of one minus X squared. That did make a heart. And what I like about this is look how similar that is. That's that with plus and minus. Are we allowed to do plus or minus? Is that a thing? To say like plus or minus? No, nah, it's going to say plus negative. I want to do the plus or minus function because if I could say plus or minus, um, it would be the whole heart. So that's pretty cool that they're so similar. But when we subtract that thing, we get the bottom half. And when we add that thing, we get the top half. That's pretty neat. So, one more I'll try from before was, they said it looks like a magnetic field, so that sounds kind of cool. Tan of, this is a variation of what we tried last time. Sine of x over x squared plus y squared. And we want this to actually equal zero. All right, so there's another little wormhole. 
Also, we can see every point where x equals 0 worked. When x is 0, that works, no matter what y is, because we have a line there. But then we get these weird guys. Whoa. So out here, it thinks it processes the scale because it just looks so clumpy. You zoom in and it can't even it starts containing detail it can't get because there's like more and more stuff it's trying to comprehend in this vortex. Whoa. We are back into the eyes of sort of like a universe being born. But yeah, this one does look like a magnetic field. I do get that vibe. That's like a uh, simulated universe if the other one was a natural universe. So a uh, couple more that look short. So I'm going to do the ones that look kind of short to type right here. Eat it. Well, they say something about infinity. I don't think they're going to allow infinity here um, unless it's like a limit. I don't think they're going to allow to the power of infinity. Sine of x factorial equals cosine of y. They said is infinite families. Oh, infinite infinities. That's cool. Yeah, look. You want infinite infinities? You got infinite infinities right there. The interesting thing is that normally the factorial had a weird zone, but the sine of x, that being factorial, didn't have the weird zone. It's a more normal, cool, simple repetition. We got infinite infinities. So, you know what this reminds me of? Maybe I'll come back to see if there's any more here in a minute, but there, I had some that reminded me of this. So, I was seeing which ones have like little gaps between the things, and I found that the square root of some does it. So, like the square root of sine x equals y has these little gaps, and if I want to make it more interesting, I could say that's the square root of sine of y, and look. I got infinite x's. I found this one a minute ago, so that, like right before the stream, that reminded me of the uh, infinite infinities. And if we mess around with these, we get different little separated guys. That has that type of guy, that is that type of guy, that is that type of guy. So we get all these little interesting ones. I can try and move them around a little bit. I can try and make a wave in the middle, apparently, that does. What if I put an X there? What if I put an X there? Now it shifted it. Now it's doing weird stuff. So um, that one's fun. I'm going to do one or two more from my list I had here. Um, we have this sine squared, which is actually sort of a different function in a way. XY equals cosine squared of XY. And whoa, this one's too dense. We got to zoom in. It's having trouble seeing any detail here. But zooming in here, we do see a cool realm. Look at this weird realm. Isn't that beautiful? This one looks like some sort of gravitational or magnetic field. So now let's try a nice and simple one. What if we say that Cosine of 1 over x is the sine of 1 over y. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, it's having trouble comprehending the center again. This one looks like a spider web. It's so crazy how many different things they can look like. Like, and look at the perspective. This looks like an artist trying to draw curves. Um, it's crazy. Like when I see these, you'll be like, okay, this one looks like a spider web. This one looks like an ocean. This one looks like an animal. It, they're just all of these little trig functions and uh, stuff make like f every shape in the world. Um, so let's just actually fiddle with that one a little bit more. What happens if we had them both be sine? Does that change anything? Uh, change a little bit not much, but what if we have one be tangent? Well, that's different. Oh, no. That's strange. Whoa! Is there a bit up there and a bit down there? Are those not connected? That's weird. What's up with that gap? Whoa! This is weird. 
Look at these straight lines that work for most of the graph, but not right away. Look at that. You think you're on a straight line, but nope, you don't get to touch the origin. Imagine if you're like skiing down this, trying to get to the origin. No. So that one's cool. Now what if I made them both tangent, similar. If I made that one sign, we flip it. What if I square one of these? No, nope. that changes that. What if I square both of them? No, nope. lot of cool shapes. Whoa. This has a lot of those fake straight lines that look like they're going toward the origin and aren't. Um, all right, I have a few more on my list. This next one I have is that sine of x plus sine of y is less than a. And I'm gonna put a slider. Now here's the cool thing. So right now, if I said sine of x plus sine of y equals 1, we would get the outline of these circles, apparently. Let's confirm that. Yeah. So they're not quite circles, but they're these square-like circles. That's that. So if I say less than 1, you know, we get the outside. Now if I say less than a, I can change what's happening there. So right now we have the blue region. And you want to see something cool? Well, if I go this way, it's all blue at a certain point. It's like an ocean. Now look, you ready for islands to come out of the ocean? So here's little islands forming. And as the islands grow, what do you think is going to happen? Well, there's a bit where it's like checkerboard. It hits square for a second. It hits the grid. And then the it switched which one is the islands and which one's the ocean. Look, now it's like the opposite color is a little island on the other. Isn't that cool? While we have the slider here, let's try like squaring one of these maybe or doing something interesting. Whoa. Isn't that so weird? Um, what if we make one of these? Well, first let's just try putting X in front of it. Whoa, that's weird. Is it gonna merge? Oh, they're slowly merging as we go out there. The water is like slowly spreading. Whoa. From all the way here, there was like not much. It's like a flood is starting to come in from these rivers. Oops. Ooh, now we get a lot of different types. Ooh, and now they get more square-like as you go off. That's weird. Look at that, that's weird. This reminds me of one of the other ones. All right. I think that this might be one of the other ones that looks like that. So we got x squared times cosine of x. No, no, go down there. Okay, times cosine of x. That already looks cool. Times sine of y. They they want me to be more careful because they need to know which part the cosine is applying to. Okay, there we go. Look at this. This is the one it reminded me of. Look at, like, over here, it's like a grid. And then over here, you get this, like, it looks like a riverbed with stones. 
Now, can we somehow make a slider here? Like if we make this A instead? Whoa, that started on one. This was if it wasn't squared there. Now look, you ready for the thing to change? Oh yeah, sometimes it's like evening it out. It's weird because some of them only let it be positive. Right now it's like a grid with a missing part and these little guys. You see, it's like almost a chessboard, but they're not quite there. Cool. One last one I have on my notes here. There's a lot more for us to find and investigate, but this is the last that I had pre-written to show some wild shapes. There's more in the comments already though that I'm already gonna have to do. All right, here's an A equals one. Let's try and zoom in and make this visible. It's having trouble grasping it. That's more like closer to what it looks like. Look, we separate and we're going flat and sparse. There are lines here, but look, they're like flat and sparse. Not quite flat, but they're getting there. Now as we go closer, they more... And now they're flat again. And we'll do that in more slow motion. This is the other direction, but it looks similar. Whoa. That's cool. Alright, so... Those are the ones I currently had right here. We can try messing with other ones just by very, oh yeah, that's cool. So look, that's gonna be fun to mess with, with our slider. So. having trouble seeing this one but that's still cool it got pretty weirdly square like doing these weird outlines that's so trippy oh yeah okay let me get back to the comments for a second those graphs are wild so um in these comments we have a few more um, suggestions I'll probably try in a minute we also have a cats greater than dogs that looks almost like one you would type in here but I don't think that's gonna do anything let's see cats greater than dogs they want me to make like 50 sliders for all these letters well if y equals cats I have my four sliders That doesn't work. Y equals cats. Cats. There. Y equals cats. No. So, cats, I do think, are better than dogs, but I love dogs, too. I have nothing against dogs. They're awesome. But cats are special to me. So uh, if I had to pick one, I would pick cats. And as we know, I have three cats. Oh, there's dandelions right there in the background. I don't even know if your comments were mentioning that. But real quick, since cats came up, I'm going to have to real quick make this screen bigger and give a little dandy cameo. You guys ready for a little dandy cameo? Da, 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 da. That's a nice dandelion. So, okay, look, he wants his belly rubbed. So this is why I think cats are kind of superior. Dandelion does his own business throughout the day, handles his own job, um, rarely bothers me, never causes other people problems. And then whenever I want, he'll just come hang out and want his belly rubbed and be super cute and be a nice little boy. 
So there's a dandelion. Maybe I'm going to move back a little bit so I can pet him a little bit during the stream. But I will shrink myself again so that we can, um, oops, uh-oh, what am I doing? I will shrink myself again if I can so that uh, we can see the graphs again in a sec. But I hope you guys enjoy your little dandelion cameo. If you join the Discord, you got a little picture of dandelion to comment on stuff because he's awesome. He's a creature of pure love. So, um, yeah, let's see what else we got here. Someone said dogs are more loyal, and people say that, but my cats are really loyal. They like, if I'm ever sad, they'll come cuddle me. If I call their name, they come. They're loyal. So dogs do have a special, like, functional loyalty where they can, like, do things for humans sometimes. Um, so that is pretty dope if you use a dog, like, on your farm or something for, like, helping you with jobs. That's kind of cool, but um, yeah, my cats are loyal. A lot of the disses people give to cats, I feel like are just not nicely raised cats or something. Cause like my cats don't bite, they don't scratch, they are do come when they're called, they're very loyal. They, so I think if you get a good cat and you raise it right, and it has a lot of the traits that people expect from dogs. They play with stuff. They'll play like fetch like games with me. So cats and dogs are not that different. They're both pretty awesome. But as we can see right here, there are a few reasons why cats are extra royal and extra sweet. Um, so <laughs> that's a little dandelion cameo for now. Um, we can try looking at one that someone said has a cool thing about it, which is that um, we have one over x squared plus one. And to whoever's commenting that if a cat owner dies, if the cat's hungry, they will eat you. First of all, I doubt that's always true. I bet sometimes dogs would do that, sometimes cats would do that, sometimes they wouldn't. Maybe more common for cats, I don't know. Could look it up someday, but here's what I'll say. Good. If I'm dead, he shouldn't starve too. Yeah, he can eat me. I'd rather he doesn't die. I want him to be fed on something. So, what's wrong with that? If he's loyal to me, I'll be loyal to him. And the uh, ancient Egyptians worshipping cats. I like to think about what they would think of my cats. Because I think that my other cat, Sage, is like perfectly constructed as a typical cat. And so he's like, he would be what they expected, but was like their standard of perfection. Like he's like what they sculpted. And so Sage would just be like, they would treat him like royalty. He'd be what they expected as the, the perfect ideal cat. Dandelion is just like a weird alien. He's fluffy. He's sque he squeaks instead of meowing. He's silly. He's weird. Um, they would just be perplexed by him. They would think he was awesome, but the, he would be like nothing they've ever seen. Dandelion is like a, definitely a product of humans uh, breeding cats over time because he would not survive in the woods very well. I feel like Sage, my other guy, might like be able to hunt for himself for a while in the woods, but Dandelion's too sweet and naive. He's just a sweet little heart. So, um, okay, I'll pan it a little lower so that you can at least see the Dandelion while we get our next shapes ready. So... Let's see. Um, we got a lot of comments about cats and dogs. Feel free to continue debating, but uh, that's my main stance, is that dogs are awesome, but cats are even better to me. Someday I would like to maybe have a dog if I have like a property in the woods or something, so that I could just run around with the dog in nature. But I don't want to commit to taking a dog like once or twice every day on a long walk in the city here, which is what you want to do to make your dog happy if you get one. So, Dandelion doesn't need a walk, he just needs a lot of pets. Um, 
Someone's wondering how you do logic in Desmos. I haven't looked at it that much. Um, I love logic. I'm not sure if they have the commands for stuff like that. It's, I mean, this sector of it's made for graphing as opposed to like deducing like a Boolean truth table or something. Um, but let's see. One over x squared plus one. And I do like the random question, so I'll answer in a minute. Someone asked my opinion on math channels, so I'll answer that in a minute. This one someone mentioned because the area under the curve is pi. And that's pretty cool. Um, so that is pretty awesome. Uh, there are places like that where weird things show up as the area under something. So that's quite cool. Um, is that what it was? It's, it's either pi or some multiple of pi or something. Um, let me see. I think, yeah, the comment says pi, and I do think I remember that's correct, uh, that the area under that is that, which is pretty cool. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to shrink the webcam. I'm bad at this. Sorry. Um, you know, I'm not a tech whiz. Da, 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 sorry. Nope. That's not what I want. Nope. What I want is... Oh, I made this too big. Sorry, one sec. I need it to be the right dimension to fit it anyway. So, now I'm going to shrink myself. Here we go. This was the curve. It's not that fancy looking of a curve, but the area under it being pi is pretty special. So, um, someone said they had software that draws random Lisaju plots. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that, but they are cool. I've seen them. They're pretty awesome. And as for my opinion on math channels, uh, given that I am to a degree a math channel, I obviously think there's some merit there. Um, I mean, this isn't just a math channel, but I do a lot of math. Um, I like math channels. I think they're awesome. I think it's a great part of culture. I think that some of them can be kind of boring, that they're just to what people expect from math, the same type of math they got lectured at in school, same presentation where it's like just one long shot of someone at a whiteboard or whatever. Some of my streams are like that, but um, I don't know. I think that math videos could be more creative and interesting sometimes. So there are some great math channels. I mentioned some of my favorites in the last stream. So there are some math channels that are doing great, awesome things. Uh, and all math channels I respect, they're doing cool things, but some of them are a little boring. So I'm trying to make it interesting without losing any of the technicality. Um, but yeah, there are some that are absolute classics. Um, so maybe I'll work with more math days over time. Um, about my most hated subject, um, I don't think there's a specific subject I dislike, but what I might dislike more is uh, tedious memorization in any subject. So memorizing certain things can be fun. Like I've even had fun in middle school trying to memorize 100 digits of pi and random stuff. But I think that it's more important to memorize simple tools to use in a toolkit of problem solving and knowing when those tools might come in handy and memorizing patterns as opposed to memorizing the first 20 results the pattern creates. Um, so I think that like whenever you're in something that it verges in a lot of subjects, like I took like a class called shrub identification and it was just a botany class just for the hell of it in college. Uh, I just was like, I'll try this botany class. It was at a different campus than my usual one because there's a few campuses connected. So I had to go this whole track, go all the way up this hill, take a bus for part of it. And then I like got this carpool with this other person who had to bike to their house. It was a crazy trek. But they had this nice like botanical garden-y zone up there. And I loved the shrub part. But I ended up dropping the class right at the end because it was... I... um. 
didn't want to learn all the Latin names. It was just like every single test we got in there, we would like go on field trips and like look at plants and marvel at plants and kind of talk about their Latin names too. And then on the test, it was just about Latin names. <laughs> so, I mean, there's like a few other things, but it was like, if you didn't know the Latin name of 80% of them, you were going to do bad on the test. Um, <laughs> so that was boring. Kind of um, turned me off of that one. But I mean, it was a good class still, but that part didn't like, and then there's just a lot of stuff like that in certain subjects where you're supposed to like memorize a certain thing. That wouldn't be an example of a subject I dislike. I do like botany a lot, but anything that requires you to memorize a long list of something might be not my favorite. And it's not because even that I'm bad at it. Like, I think I'm decent at memorizing stuff when I want to, but I just think it's like taking up unnecessary space in the brain. Um, uh, someone asked if I'm going to join the next year's Summer of Math Exposition, which is something that 3 Blue on Brown does. Uh, I thought about it both of the last years because I've been watching him since he way before he started that. Um, so maybe, I don't know. I kind of, when I, that came out, I was like just starting combo class and I kind of just wanted to try making combo class from scratch first before I had it like be part of any other promotional thing or whatever. Um, like I wasn't sure if I got a bunch of views from that, if it would just be like his fans who just happened to click me or like people who actually had grown to really like me. Um, so I'll probably do it next year or just tag some video with that. Like there, why not tag some video with that maybe, but I don't know. It was at the time where I was starting combo class and I just wanted to see what I could do from scratch. But I, you know, I thought about it. I saw his video announcing it because um, I see like all the videos that he puts out these days, they're great. Um, someone said, please teach the math personally. Well, if anyone wants to be in smaller group classes with me, there is a higher tier on Patreon that does offer super small currently like now is the next couple months when it would be super small and like maybe even sometimes one-on-one. -on -one. Um, there's like uh, small group classes I do at a few times a month that a lot of the people can't even go to because of their time zones and stuff. And so, you know, you'll be in a tiny group and have closer to one-on-one -on -one time with me. That does obviously cost money. That's the higher tier on Patreon. There are lower tiers that are fun also. Um, also to note, I'm pretty sure there's one of the videos where I put the names of the Patreon supporters in the chat, in the description, let me confirm that. Yep. So in this description is thanks to all of the Patreon supporters. And currently I'm doing that for all the tiers, even though it won't necessarily always be like that. It might only sometimes be higher tiers. Right now, all the tiers are getting it. Um, so anyone who wants to see some people's names who I want to shout out, look in the description. Someone asked, when will odd plus odd equal odd? And it never will. And there's a few ways we could deduce that. One way of deducing that is that an odd number is, well, we could make a little like table where it's essentially a modular table when mod two, meaning what remainder you have when you divide by two, uh, a little mod two table describes it because evens are zero in mod two or are congruent to zero and odds are congruent to one congruent to meaning modularly like equal once you've gone around the modular clock um so it, you could say basically like odds are ones in there and one plus one would normally be two but in that land two is zero so one plus one in that land is always zero meaning odd plus odds always even if you want to not talk about it modularly, you can also say that an even number can be called 2k for some integer k. An odd number can be called 2k plus 1 for some integer k. And so if you have two odds, now you have 4k plus 2. All of that's divisible by 2. So even. Someone asked if I'm an anarchist. Um, yeah, so I... I'm not like part of Nessa. A lot of the stuff I've read about specific people using that term, like saying they are an anarchist might not apply to me. I like chaos, so I don't mind a little anarchy, but I also 
I'm not necessarily like what a lot of people would think of as an anarchist. I like planned chaos that actually has a long-term goal of growth. And so I don't like destroying things just because I believe the whole world will burn. Um, I like destroying things to create room for new growth and because I think chaos can be captivating and fun. Um, so I don't know if I'd call myself an anarchist, but I would call myself a chaos lord. I don't know. Definitely a bit wild. Um, so, someone said in Boy Scouts they learn the names of the local plants in which you can eat. I think that is an underused skill, is which plants are edible around you. Obviously do a lot of research. If you ever see me eat something weird in a video, you have to research yours too, because just seeing it looks like mine through the screen isn't enough to know you have the same thing. Yeah, there's more research than it looked like the thing Demotro ate. Just saying that in advance, because I may at some point do like foraging episodes, trying to, uh, in a snack break, forage stuff from wildlife that I can get around here. Uh, and that's why I'm saying in advance and after uh, right now, if you see me eat weird stuff, you got to do your own research before you try to eat anything weird. Um, someone wants to know my favorite invertebrate. Um, good question. Wait, so invertebrates are just the certain type of are those just the insects that have that? Or is it like the whole, is everything an invertebrate? Because does invertebrate just mean insects without the spine or like all types? Um, Cause what the word means is like no vertebrae. So it's like boneless, but um, yeah, I guess it's not just insects if these are all invertebrates. Um, good question. Um, there's a lot of really cool ones, but I'm not sure. I think octopi are pretty awesome. Let's say they're one of my spirit animals. I can relate to, to an octopus. Um, oh, there's one of my cats meowing. Is another one? Well, we already got a dandelion in here, but we can let Mr. Sage in if he wants to come in. Message. Yeah, it's a good little boy. Now we got two cats. Cats are double trouble. You want to come up and hang out on the bed, Sage? Okay. Sage. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to get double trouble cats. Okay. So, my favorite octopuses or octopi are cool. Actually, so I was calling them octopi. You know, technically octopuses can be correct and can sometimes be more scientifically correct than octopi and actually the most scientifically correct is debatable between not octopi but between octopuses and octopodes multiple octopuses are often scientifically called octopodes um but the other one i wanted to give a shout out to right now is a good old earthworm because uh, those are great for soil and they're underrated and they like help us in our gardens like locally. So earthworms need a shout out. I'm sure there's a lot I'm missing because there's a lot of cool types of them. Um, like here's some types. Oh, bees need a shout out. Bees are super underrated, but really the underwater ones are the coolest. Like it's hard to beat all this stuff. Like anemones are cool, jellyfish are cool. These are all super cool. Um, but bees and wasps get a shout out too. Um, yeah, butterflies too. They should get a shout out. So yeah, there's a lot of good ones. Um, invertebrates, yeah, are basically the type that, let's see their technical definition. It means no vertebrae, but yeah, that, so that's just it. They don't have a vertebral column. Um, so... Yeah, it is interesting to think about how animals have a solid part to them. Uh, because, like, a lot of these don't have a solid-ish part to them, like jellyfish and stuff, because they go through the water. Um, other ones have different structures that keep them solid. Some are just tiny, and that's okay to be, like, tinier without needing the bones. When you're a certain size, it works to have a shell and no interior bones. But you don't see animals big enough that are like that, that are a shell with no interior bones. 
there's like sort of a size limit partially maybe due to gravity or even just due, or earth's pressure mixed with like sort of how you need to be able to move and maintain size oh they're both going out the window right now they say it's okay Andy. so um there's sort of um a size limit to which ones can have some types of shells and then if you look at us we need bones on the inside but like a crab has the hard part on the outside so sort of interesting to think about so uh let's go back to the calculator just so it looks cool because that's most of what our stream is in case anyone pops by they'll get to see some weird stuff x tan x was yeah we'll do it. x squared sage what's up what's wrong sage all right sage wanted to go back out so uh we're back on our graphs but invertebrates are cool um let's see what other questions we got Someone asked with Tupper's self-referential formula. Uh, no, but I got a challenge for you guys if you want. Um, find the part. It's a really cool formula that graphs uh, all the possible variations of a little chunk of things. So you can like find a sector of it somewhere up there that spells stuff out or has a picture. So someone try and find the coolest combo class part of it. Find a part of Tupper's self-referential formula that uh, says combo class if it fits or just combo, or says Demotro, or like if you have room says combo and then has like a die dice or a clock or something, if you can somehow make that in there. So try and find one that says combo or combo class. Send it to me and that'll be awesome because someday I am gonna make an episode about which shapes you can graph in what ways and it will include stuff like how you graph circles, how you graph squares, how you graph smiley faces, um, it'll include a little couple of these probably for fun. And it'll also have to include Tupper's self-referential formula as another interesting way you could say I'm graphing a shape or something. Uh, but for those who don't know what that is, it's really cool. I'll explain it more, uh, in a whole video. Um, so someone wants to see, someone asked about like Popeye's biscuits and they said dry as hell. Uh, yeah, I think I got to agree that um, Popeye's chicken is pretty good, but the biscuits are pretty dry. I think I got to agree there. Now, biscuits are normally not my favorite part. Like, I like the fried chicken and maybe some mashed potatoes more than the biscuits. So, I'm not like a huge biscuit eater. I'll have like maybe one if I'm having the chicken, maybe half of one. But, yeah, you're right. The Popeye's ones are pretty damn dry. So, um, so we want to see tan x squared plus y squared equals a. Let's try that one. Remember, whenever we put a, we get a slider to mess around with. That's really what you get when you put any variable they don't recognize as a typical one. Um, they're like, do you want a slider for that? They assume you mean your own variable that's not an axis. So, whoa, okay. We got a lot of circles. No, no, no. Stay on page. A lot of circles. Wait, wait. You're in the view where you can see this, right? Okay, thank God. I was. I, I forgot if I still accidentally add myself too big. Um, so we got a lot of circles. That's pretty crazy. Morphing circles. Someone asked my favorite food. I can't really pick that. There's so many good foods. Um, there's there's too many to list. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to fruit is pretty awesome. Like a, all sorts of fruit are really interesting and cool to me. But I like all sorts of stuff. You can make really good everything. I ate some Mexican food earlier today from a local little Mexican, like, rest. It's like a taqueria built into a little Mexican market. Um, that was good. I like, I like all sorts of food. If I could design a meal, I would probably have, like, 
a steak, some fruit salad, some a few types of vegetable, and I don't know. There's there's so many good meals. I like cooking and food's cool. I don't even have like the biggest appetite throughout the day. Sometimes I have to force myself to eat, but I really like cooking. So when I'm in the right mood, I um will make whatever type of thing. It's a lot of good food. Uh, I'm not very picky. I think that people should get over their pickiness more. Uh, there's certain things that I don't like that make me like food less, but I've learned to be able to eat like pretty much anything I'm not allergic to. So I think it's good to like overcome pickiness and try and like not only overcome the pickiness, but try and find something to enjoy about different weird things that you don't like as much. Although one thing I'm mildly picky about, not like I would turn down the food, but just that I don't like as much is our culture puts way too much sauce on stuff. Burgers need like half the condiments. Salad needs like half the dressing. It, we put way too much saucy stuff on everything. Um, so yeah, someone said they were talking about evens and odds. Uh, I'm just going through random comments. Um, it's true that even and odd only applies to integers. So you can't call other ones, stuff like that. There is a term I've heard that you could call something half uh, integer. You could be like, this is a half integer if it's like 1.5. So you could maybe call that half odd. Odd is sort of like half even. I don't know. Someone asked how many splinters on your hand after accidentally touching a cactus fruit. Well, the last one I burnt all the splinters off, as you can see in the main channel snack break episode. But uh, the time like a year ago when I touched one and I got the splinters, tons. They're like micro. They're really hard to see. They're minuscule. And so I didn't even touch it that bad. Like I, if I had grabbed it, it would have been more, but I couldn't even tell. Like they were like all over, like these little micro splinters, the all day, where is it? Like you can't even hardly see them. And then like you can kind of maybe see this micro little hair to get out and they'll just like be bothering you and popping up. Must've been dozens. Um, someone said that I was calling them octopodes, but they said octopodes can also be pronounced that way. So yeah, I'll look it up more. Maybe octopodes is one of the more ways to do it. I'm not sure. Let's see if we can get octopodes or octopodes pronunciation. Octopodes. That one said octopodes. No, I'm not gonna watch like a three minute ad for that. Um, some of these look like octopodes, but it, maybe octopodes, that's cool too. I like that they have a lot of ways of pronouncing them, I guess. Someone said, fun fact, B is now legally known as fish in California. I bet you got that from, I saw, I didn't see the video yet, but I saw on YouTube um, a video from it's like one of the channels that the game theory guy does but I think it was on the food theory channel which I actually think is from what I've seen a pretty fun channel channel called food theory it's like the guy who um, what's his name um, Matt Pat um, but yeah I saw that he made a new video about that so I should watch that later because I am curious um, why B is now legally known as fish. So I'll have to research that one. Um, we got some octopus gang in here. We got some more comments. Someone asked if I love pasta. Yeah, pasta is great. Pasta is another one of the good foods. Um, in fact, there's many types of noodle that are great. Um, you know what I'm gonna try one time for a snack break maybe? Here's a technique I thought of that I thought would be interesting. So you take your noodles and you get your water boiling and then you drop in the noodles one at a time and then wait a little bit and then take them out and they'll all be different amounts of al dente. They'll all be like different amounts of firmness. Some people might hate that idea, but I thought it'd be cool. I also want to try and make a really long noodle someday. I've got to really like get a 10 foot noodle slurp. You know when you slurp a good noodle? 
I want to get like a 10 foot one. So I'm going to build like a 10 foot noodle someday. I have made homemade pasta, um, which is really good. So that's how I'll make a long noodle someday. But you can use like flour and eggs and salt and stuff and make really good noodles. Um, someone said something is a coordinate grid being built. Let's see what that means. Um, oh no, that's supposed to be divided by. It somehow got up in the power. Oh, it's raining out there again. You can hear that. Oh, hi, Dandelion. Um, oh, whoa, this does look cool. Yeah, coordinate grid being built. I totally know what you mean. What's cool is that we like zig into the grid too. <laughs> like imagine if you were following this line. So, yep, I like the ones that turn into a grid. And then over here we get like a comb, comb next to a grid. That one's wild. All right, let's see. Someone's asking my favorite math equation and that. Uh, oh, damn it, I need to knock over a book. It's okay, just spooked you. Um, so yeah, I can't pick a favorite max, uh, a favorite single math equation. There's too many good ones. Um, someone says Taco Bell has the secret hot sauce. Yeah, I like the fire sauce from Taco Bell. Taco Bell's good. Fast food's like not the best overall, either like for health or culture, or often even flavor. Back. Du, 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 du. Why am I gone? Let me know as soon as I'm back because I can't tell. Am I back? It's probably my internet. Cool. Yeah, sorry guys, it's probably, the internet's not good around here. I need to figure something out to do about that. Um, but that'll happen once in a while. I was wondering how good my phone internet is because I want to take you guys on a field trip stream sometime, but I don't know how well I'm going to be able to stream at the marina. So we're going to have a really crappy quality stream one time to test it out. I mean, hopefully it won't be really crappy quality. Hopefully it'll stream just fine down there. Someone's saying the bet chat can't. I don't know what they mean by that. Um, I'm going to have to Google that before I search it. Bet chant is a feature where... Oh, it's like betcha can't. Okay, so it's some feature that's going to do something. Let's see. Betcha can't. Huh? What's going on? Opened fireworks. Betcha can't. I don't really get why it's called betcha can't, but that's cool. Look, fireworks. Yeah, no, I just had to Google it because I know one of these days... Someone's going to give me like some weird inappropriate or something thing to type in and it's going to go wrong, but whatever, you know, when you're the chaos Lord, you're ready for stuff to go wrong. Someone said they think I would be good at Tetris. Funny enough, although I don't play many video games, I have a cutout of a Tetris piece right here. Um, this I used in a stream a while ago, or no, in a uh, short video a while ago. Uh, this was to demonstrate that you cannot build a square with the Tetris pieces or, or a rectangle uh, using all of the Tetris pieces. Whether you count flips as the same or not, either set of all the Tetris pieces um, cannot build a rectangle. Even though they have the right amount of squares to theoretically do it, you can prove they could never fit using a parity of even an odd argument. And the funny thing about that is that the pentominoes, which have five cells, like the one beyond the tetrominoes, which are the names for those pieces, um, these can go into tons of rectangles, like thousands of rectangles these can fit into as the whole set using all of the pentominoes. 
but the tetrominoes can't and it's due to a parody thing where this one if you laid it on a chessboard always would have two cells on black and two cells on white no matter where you put it two cells on black and two cells on white however there's one piece that throws it off there's one the one that's like a little t like thing that wherever you put it has either three on white and one on black or vice versa three on black and one on white and since the others are even you get this uneven parity where if you used all the tetromino pieces if you were laying it on an imaginal chessboard they would in total cover an uneven amount of black and white pieces um, and a rectangle using an even amount which would be their dimension would need a same amount of black and white rectangles or black and white squares in the rectangle with an even amount of cells and so you can prove with this parity argument that it's impossible to make these into a rectangle using all of them even though you can do it thousands of ways with the five cell ones so there's theory about tetrominoes that's cool someone said my opinion of lgbtq I support anyone. I think that people should have whatever rights that other humans get. So I support LGBTQ and I think that people should be <laughs> chill with other people just being themselves. And I don't know why so many people uh, get offended about other people being themselves. Um, Someone asked for y equals 10xy. So we got to clear all these fireworky guys. Okay, there's too many of those. I'm just going to restart it. Um, tan of xy. Was that it? y equals tan of xy. Ooh, yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah. A lot of trippy stuff. Now what if we, like, throw an X there? That just adds that. That's weird. What if we made... Well, we know tan of X squared is one of the best. What about Y equals tan of X cubed? I think we've tried that, but... That... Wait, no. No! Not tetration! Okay. Yeah, that does that. Um, so, let's see what else we got here. Someone said a set of two bags of all Tetris pieces will film a rectangle. Good to know. And they're saying assuming a set of seven. And so, the set of seven is, yeah, when you consider a flip as different if it's not rotationally the same. So... This one is rotation is a flip different than this because uh, you can't rotate them into each other. Um, but other ones could rotate into each other. So you could either call it five pieces or seven pieces. Uh, like, for example, with pentominoes, there's 12 if flip is the same piece, uh, which is how they're usually done. And there's more than 12 if flip is different. Um, Someone asked what makes me cry or what makes me angry. Um, that's a long story. I, you know, I'll go into more of that stuff later. Um, I do cry sometimes because I still have a very hard life in some ways and still have some mental health issues. And so I do cry sometimes, but it's not like a simple answer what makes me cry. So, long story. However, between the crying, definitely find a lot to appreciate about life and a lot to laugh about. Um, so, let's see. Cool. We got a lot of uh, fun comments. I'm not sure how to do the absolute value on one asked for is this going to work as the absolute value sign let's see y equals absolute value of x yeah um so if absolute value works like that let me try the one they said so sign of x plus y 
in the absolute value. Oh, uh -oh get rid of that end bit. Wow, it's really starting to rain out there. Um, equals um, absolute value of sine of x minus y. What's wrong here? I need something. Oh, yeah, what am I doing? I put another equal. It's not supposed to have the y. It's just supposed to be that. What's wrong? I need something on both sides of the equal symbol. I do. It doesn't like the absolute value thing, I guess. It's, it's having trouble with this absolute value thing. I don't know if that actually worked like that. So sorry to that equation. Um, so yeah, this is a fun program. Always recommend fiddling around on Desmos. And remember, I have my other favorite tabs pulled up in case I needed them. Some of my other favorite websites to look at mathy stuff or other fun knowledge include Wikipedia, one of the greatest. This site called Wolfram Alpha has their own calculator and a lot of good resources. And the online encyclopedia of integer sequences. Um, I'm going to need to take a pause on typing all of the comments for right now. So for a minute, we're going to chat or look at the other ones. Someone's asking why I prefer Desmos over GeoGebra. I, not, I wouldn't necessarily. I just haven't tried GeoGebra much. I'm just like not a tech wizard. I don't use much technology. Um, I do a lot of my math stuff like by hand actually. So sometime maybe I'll set that up and look into it more. It's a little more uh, high depth or whatever. Might have more abilities. But Desmos is just so easy and accessible right here that I've just been using it. So maybe I'll try the GeoGebra one sometime too. Sorry, I got to plug in my phone. Need my phone to see the chat. So let's make sure we have something cool up here. Let's just make a crazy, we're just gonna do a random guess one while we pause and think and talk for a minute. So what'll be a random crazy one? Sine of one over 10 of x squared. Nope, that got a little boring. We'll put the 10 on the outside and the sine in there. That one's pretty cool. All right, we'll leave this one on the screen for a moment while we recalibrate. Ooh. Um, we got more suggestions. Um, feel free to keep leaving the equations, but I need a little break from looking at the comments and typing all these equations in here. Um, it's actually like, I'm very fast at typing because um, I do a lot of writing, but this can be a little like nitpicky type of typing where you have to be really careful about your parentheses and stuff. So when you're typing in the Desmos, like even though you can kind of just go wild, you do have to like make sure your parentheses and stuff are right and that you're not making like the subscript in the wrong place and stuff. Um, let's just fiddle around with one more slider one maybe for a minute. Like what happens if we say tan of x to the a? No, not all that. They're creeping together. I'm just fiddling around with random ones for fun. This one's cool. It has like a few phases because it has like the uh, everything's missing phase. The they're both there, but um, this thing's up. 
that like these two are both upward and then they have a phase where it's like this one's there but one's down and one's up you see there's like three different phases well it's like four because the blank one goes in between it's like blank up blank down blank up blank down so someone said i could copy equations from chat and paste them i could if i had the chat here but well, also, it doesn't always work because sometimes when you copy and paste in Desmos, sometimes it turns it into like they write thing next to the text. Like it, when you move words, sometimes it like turns them into like phrases for what parentheses you were using and stuff. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it does, though. But I don't even have the chat here because I, I need that on a different computer or something unless you guys are going to be watching the chat with a slight delay. I, I could try that, but I feel like it would be you guys watching the chat with a delay as part of the screen. Um, I don't know if you necessarily need, like you guys would be seeing the chat twice, basically, like the place you normally see it and on the screen with a delay. So that's why I have it on my phone because I feel like the screen's more interesting. If that's not taking up the space, maybe it makes more sense to put it on there so it's more accessible. I don't know. That's trippy looking. Well, that's crazy looking. Wow, yeah, when you zoom in, you see how this bit's more dense? It gets like darker at that line. It's because now not only are there these combs, but there's in-between combs. That's cool. So, someone said, what do you mean hoping I switch it to 10? I don't know what you mean. Um, and if I click the bottom left, I can get more options. Uh, yes, that's where I'll get my absolute value and stuff. Good call. That'll help out. Because absolute value I didn't know before. A lot of them you can type in and get. Uh, like if you type PI, it turns it to that pi symbol, uh, stuff like that works well, but good to know where these type of guys are and what's up with functions. Yeah. See, they got all these ones. So this is good. This shows us like a toolkit. Um, yeah. So they have hyperbolic trig functions we could try. Hmm. This is cool. They have these number theory ones, which, hmm, those are interesting. Um, and then we got our inverse trig functions. Those will be fun too to try. Like we didn't try many combos of these. Like there's the secant of the cotangent of X. These ones have their own fun, you know? We have a lot more possibilities we can try. Um, what was the way they wrote the hyperbolic ones? Okay. That's funny, look at this one. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, So we, we could just keep adding them and just see what happens. Just going to get crazy. Okay, that one killed it all. Um, so someone wanted A to be 10. Oh, I'm sorry, I lost what the A was. Um, but you guys can pull up Desmos, you know. you sh Part of why uh, I'm doing this is because I want other people to learn how to have fun on stuff like this. And if you do it along with the stream, I feel like you'll have come up with your own fun variations of fiddling the sliders and stuff. Um, so, yep. Where's the bot? What do you mean? Um, 
So. Okay, someone said a long one. There's a bot in the chat. I'm not seeing one. Let me see on my other chat window. Um, yeah, there is one. That's weird. I, I guess my phone was just showing me the top chat, meaning my phone was like removing the bot ones. I need my phone to be showing all chat. How do I switch that? Yeah, how do I get this to all chat instead of top chat? Okay, live chat. Okay, there. Yeah, there is a robot. To all of my younger fans, do not click ads like that. You're going to get scammed and you will not find any hot girls on the website like they claim. So, the bot is dead. Um, so, thank you all for all these suggestions and stuff. Um, I think I'm going to end the stream relatively soon. Um, so, we can try fiddling around with a few more. But, like this one, I think I saw with the absolute value. But first, let's see if it works without the absolute value. That makes squares. What happens when we put that in absolute value? That's cool already. Look at that. Staircases. And then we got some here. That didn't work. We got too many of these, maybe. Hmm. Whatever. Um, so, thank you to everyone. Um, and... Um, someone in there asked my opinion of sex. I'm not really going to go into that right now. I may have some younger viewers or people who want to use this teaching materials. So I'll think about how explicit I want to be in grade negative two. Grade negative two may be more explicit. You never know. But yeah, sex is good. You know, it's a fun thing. If you do it, be careful. But yeah, it's a good fun thing. Um... Someone said to mute something because there's echo. Um, I don't think it's because of that necessarily, but um, I don't know. There might just be random problems, but um, in general, I think I'm going to log off of the stream pretty soon. So let me try using one or two more of these other types of functions they had here. What if we do like the inverse ones of the ones that were cool before? Yeah, it's interesting to see what these ones look like, even. That's weird. That's just there. Well, that's all you get. So what happens if we, like, amplify this? Whoa! Yeah. 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 So that's fun. Um, so someone asked if I've seen Desmos art competitions. Not sure. I've seen cool Desmos art online. I don't think I've seen a competition. Um, but I have seen cool people who have designed really elaborate things on Desmos. Uh, what I'm particularly interested in these first few streams is how simple of a function can make something crazy. Like this one keeps getting me just because of how simple it is. Why is the tan of x squared? Um, and another one that really kept getting me because it was so simple was something like tan of x sine x, or maybe I have it backwards. No, go away, die, no. x times 
times sine of x. Yeah, this one was really cool. So these really simple ones are just mind blowing to me, but I do also like that people can use Desmos, like using a ton of different equations at once to make some really elaborate art. So that's cool. Um, if anyone ever wants to design some elaborate art for combo class, let me know and I will let you know some cool stuff to design. Um, I, I can't do the whole parametric function right now, but maybe I'll try that one next time. Um, someone wants to see the floor function real quick though. Get a staircase. The floor function, which rounds it down, will always give it some type of spiky appearance. It's going to have some spikiness whenever we get the floor function in play. Whoa, I like that one. Floor of x squared is floor of y squared. Um, what about floor of sine of x? That didn't work. Um, whoa, floor of sine of x is floor of sine of y. Look, we got separated box. I just keep being shocked on these streams by all the stuff that we keep getting. Just crazy what these equations do. Okay, got some vertical ones. Um, what if we put it a little different? What if we just say x, is, y is the floor? Okay, now we want the floor on both. That made it way more fun when floor was on both. Okay, we'll put tangent in. Whenever we put tangent in, it gets weird. Yeah, that one's not too crazy weird, but it's cool. Okay, that's interesting. Um, well, what's going on here? Huh. These ones are having trouble getting it in the graph. It's having... It's thinking too hard. Well, that one's weird. These are cool. Um, whoa. Um, so yeah, those are pretty cool. Um, okay, the parametric function person said it looks really cool, and so I'll go with it. Um, I don't even know how to specify just the x and the y, maybe, of... See, so, yeah, like, I don't know how to do integrals on this. I'll, I'll need to figure that out next time to Raven the Dog. Uh, remind me in another stream where I'll come back to this comment... I haven't done integrals on here yet, but I'll figure that one out in a bit, unless it's a really simple function here. Okay, they do have integrals, but we could try. Um, so an integral x is going to be the integral from 0 to t of cosine x squared um, I think this is what you've meant so far it's kind of hard to figure out what you meant translated into this like yeah they don't what do I want to take the derivative yeah I'll have to figure that one out later because I got to translate the way you wrote it, which is words, into how Desmos wants it. But um, I will get that one in later. I just, sorry, I don't like figuring out the technology part of like where an app lets me translate what phrase to what. Um, but I will figure that one out later. Um, and I think I need to wrap up soon. But hopefully people enjoyed seeing some really cool, weird graphs. Um, 
because I love doing this. It was raining today again, so it was another room stream. We'll be back to the combo classroom soon because uh, I feel like it might not rain the rest of the week too much, so I'll get some more good filming out there. I do have a full episode about dice coming out on the main channel in a couple days, maybe just a day or two from now, probably. Got an episode about dice dropping and got some more fun bonus stuff as usual for this bonus channel. I have not picked my streaming schedule yet, but it's very likely that one or two days from now I'll do it again and hopefully I'll catch some of you there. In the meantime, we have the Discord where you can come hang out and chat with us. There is a subreddit for Combo Class. And there's the Patreon for anyone who wants any bonus videos or just to help out. Or to try and, uh, for higher tiers, be in sort of uh, closer, able to communicate with me through like small group lessons and stuff. Um, so those are all good ways to chat with other Combo Lords or help support. Um, hope you all have fun on Desmos yourself, because there's a lot of cool stuff to do on there. Uh, and for whoever missed some of the stream, you can always watch back, try and make these rewatchable. And there were some pretty cool shapes throughout the whole thing. Um, so, sorry, I can't really go back to the rest of the comments, but... Um, do, do, do. Yeah. I think I gotta end it now. Uh, I will come back to the ones that I missed, like the parametric pair and the other ones next time we do a stream like that, because um, we'll do more streams like this whenever I'm stuck in my room, whenever it's rainy or dark out. Um, I mean, sometimes when it's dark out, we do a campfire stream, but I built a whole campfire and it rained on it. So um, before I say goodbye purely, um, I. If you guys want, you can also say goodbye to Dandelion. Because uh, I know we got some fans of Dandelion in the chat now that I've tried to encourage that. So, to anyone who wants one last little look at a cute little Dandelion. That's a good little boy. And he's so soft and nice. So... Uh, you guys are all awesome. Love you all so much. Hope you have a marvelous evening or breakfast or lunch or whatever time of day it is for you guys right now. And I will catch you in the next videos or streams.